Public Beta 4 for DaVinci Resolve 20 is out now. It's been out for just a few hours. I downloaded it. So in this video, we will walk through that update. I will show you some cool places uh, to get the best like news on these updates, and then we'll hop into Resolve and show off some cool stuff. As always, the best place to go to actually access these uh, beta updates is the support page of the DaVinci Resolve website. We have Public Beta 4 for both the uh, free and studio version of Resolve that you can download right here. And don't forget that if you hop over to the forum, there's usually a post really close to when this update goes live, specifically calling out what is new in this specific beta update. If you just go to this sort of download page and click read more, it will only show you here sort of the uh, big picture features from all of DaVinci Resolve 20, not specifically the beta 4 update. For that, you can go over to the form and get this list, but I also want to specifically call out two other resources. The first is just a little bit nicer, and that's over on the DaVinci Resolve subreddit. They repost this list, but they add some uh, helpful markers down here for whether a feature is still in progress or is studio only. So you can see these asterisks here are for studio only features, really helpful for um, you know those users on the free version. But I also want to call out one sort of interesting thing that DaVinci Resolve does, and that is that they post sort of the most detailed breakdown of these updates, or at least the most like natural sounding, over on their Facebook page. On places like Twitter, they just sort of put out a thing saying like, hey, there's an update. But on Facebook, we get this whole post, and it's by far like the easiest thing to understand and walk through, so let's do that. Today, we released Public Beta 4 of DaVinci Resolve 20, which adds further improvements to the DaVinci Resolve Public Beta, including a new flat mode for keyframe easing. This means when editing animations on the editor cut page, you can more quickly ease in or out of a pause or standstill position. So if you are animating a bouncing ball, flat mode will give you a nice pause when the ball is at the top of the bouncing, top of the bounce, before going back down, imitating real world physics. I mean, Kind of, but we'll show a flat mode. It's great. This update also adds the option to show clip handles when using the curves editor, making it uh, possible to use keyframes in the unused frames before or after a clip. This makes it easier to control the way opacity, position, zoom, and other effects are applied at either end of the clip. Another improvement when working with curves is the ability to right-click a keyframe to access easing options. This brings up an overlay window to make quick adjustments, speeding up your editing process and preventing any unintentional movement of keyframes. For studio users, this update adds support for DaVinci Resolve remote monitoring to Windows, Intel, and AMD systems. This means that you now have a wider range of computers supporting the live streaming of your DaVinci Resolve Studio viewer uh, and display to a remote monitor, making remote editing or color grading easier. In addition, this update improves automation support for manually created or imported subtitles. This means DaVinci Resolve will calculate animation timing based on the timeline position, length, and number of words to make individual word letter animation appear more smooth and natural. And those are the highlights. If we go back to just this list of updates, you see um, a lot of those same options. We have some other things like scripting API support for media pool, a uh, clip to monitor growing file. AI voice convert is now available in the Fairlight timeline context menus. Timelines created from AI IntelliScript now use the script name for that timeline name, and a handful of just like uh, bug fixes, things we've addressed, lots of things specifically with these new AI tools. So if you've been running into some issues there, absolutely specifically check out these bug fixes to see if something works for you. But we are going to hop right into this new update and resolve, which I've already downloaded, uh, to show off some of these highlights. I also haven't talked about the last few beta updates. Um, so there are some things I recognize jumping to this one that weren't in these sort of like packed notes, but I believe are still kind of new. <laughs> Lots of those around this keyframes window. They have continued to push updates here, which is great. I've been wanting to do a video more dedicated to this because I believe they absolutely still have a long way to go. I love the spline viewer on the fusion page. If we can keep pulling over features from that to this on the edit page, it will only be better. But if I uh, rig up something nice with this resolve logo, like a little move here, keyframe, keyframe, Pull forward, da da da, keyframe, keyframe. Oh, and then in the middle, just because keyframe, or keyframe there, down there. Yeah, let's make something really weird looking. So we got that. Now, these are linear keyframes. They look bad. But if we look in the spline viewer, uh, we'll see a few kind of newish things especially if you haven't checked in on this since the initial beta launch of uh, Resolve 20. 
first of all, I do notice these extra areas on the side. If I go to the very edge, you have this extra area. This is the area beyond the bounds of this clip. So you can sort of like keyframe outside of that if you want more control. You also have these keyframes in this extra timeline down here to as quickly adjust this timing without needing to like actually grab this option. That's nice. Like they said, if you right click, you have extra options here for easing, like ease in, ease out linear. Right now, all of these uh, keyframes are linear. And if I hop over to this parameters option, we see we have keyframes on these multiple different values here, but back on the key curves editor. The one big feature they called out was this option here for flat handle mode. This is important because if I uncheck this and sort of work the way this was previously, if I select these keyframes and then click to smooth, we see some stuff going on, right? Even just on this zoom parameter, we see that this line dips below this lowest keyframe, and that is because it is using this sort of like smooth mode option where it wants to like smooth between these. So it's sort of like interpolating this movement and trying to make it as smooth as possible. But a lot of the time I don't want that. If I want this keyframe to specifically uh, be the lowest this value gets, if I toggle on flat mode and then smooth it over, you'll get sort of what I see as a more traditional sort of like curve structure. I think for people who are fairly familiar with like keyframes across different software, uh, this will feel a lot more natural and like what they're used to. Even with some setups that just had like two keyframes before this, it would still do some like weird like extra compensation. I like flat mode a whole lot. And the other specific feature I want to show off is with these animated subtitles. Now, these set of subtitles I manually created. I just typed these in here, but then I dragged on one of these new Fusion titles that does this word by word animation. This is something you couldn't do before this beta update. Resolve did not generate these titles, so it doesn't actually know when each individual word is being spoken. Oh, and I also can't spell. But with this new beta update, it's going to try its best. And you'll see some of this will work better because I did much smaller chunks, uh, but you'll see what's actually going on. Immediately after the presentation announcing DaVinci Resolve 20 was complete, there were whispers. Now, I think this is most evident in this like one frame here was complete. What they functionally added was some like auto timing interpolation. So here in this one clip, I have two words. So even though I say both of those words kind of towards the beginning of this clip, it will only highlight the second word halfway through this clip. It's complete. So if you say lots of words, you know, fairly split up in time, the presentation announcing the this will feel pretty natural and super important. Uh, this functionality, I believe, someone please correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, is available in the free version. Uh, these presets were available previously, but before there was no way to sort of like connect to the timing engine. So now even if you type out your captions yourself or you don't get them transcribed by some third party, but then bring them into Resolve, you can still get some of this functionality. It won't be quite timed perfectly like it might or as close as it might if you transcribe this natively in Resolve, but as far as this extra word by word animation happening at all, lots of more people now have access to this. Additionally, if you didn't catch in a uh, smaller beta update, they did also much improve and I mean make possible the ability to change this text uh, after the fact and uh, keep this animation. So if something goes wrong in the transcription, if you do that in Resolve, um, you can just modify that really quickly over on this caption window, not on this effect window, but over on the caption window, and it will send that update. That's a great update. That was something that, you know, was bothering lots of people at launch. Last thing I did want to call out that I have uh, no clue about <laughs> is a new Swizzler tool to rearrange layers in multi-layer workflows. I haven't touched multi-layer workflows at all. Um, that was big in Resolve 20. That's not like a normal part of my workflow. I don't know quite what a Swizzler tool is supposed to do, do. <laughs> but I'll be diving into it. And if it's cool, I'll show it off. So stick around for that. And speaking of cool things I do, if you haven't been around the channel as much since DaVinci Resolve 20 launched and all of that excitement, and you're just back for this update, since then and now I've released two new product packs for DaVinci Resolve. One being this YouTube subscribe button pack. There are three different styles in there. You might've seen them throughout this video, uh, as well as a screen pump and glitch effect that I also just recently put out last week. And of course, uh, more Resolve uh, news and discussion coming as well as those presets and plugins that I love to make for Resolve uh, as well. <laughs> I think it's all very cool. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.